Hi everyone, um, I hope you're well. I thought I'd pop in today and just share what I've been up to lately, some current sewing projects, etc. So, um, like so many other people, I'm currently working from home um, and here in the UK, the restric restrictions currently um, in place um, mean that we can leave the house for exercise um, and essential shopping, but um, nothing else. So obviously I'm spending um, more time than normal at home. Um, which sounds like it should be relaxing, um, but I don't know if anyone else has done the same. I, um, it's because I know I'm at home, I had created myself such a massive to-do list. Um, I always do this at Christmas when I have time off over Christmas. I always create an enormous to-do list um, and I never manage to get through it all before I'm due back at work. Um, and I've kind of done the same because I knew I was going to be at home, so I've um, kind of committed, well, I mean, it's only um, my own decision, but I kind of committed myself, um, you know, in my own head to take part in a number of sewing challenges, um, and I've been trying to do lots of other things, um, and uh, obviously I've still also got work, because it's not the same as Christmas when I'm actually on holiday, um, so yeah, I this morning I woke up really early, I think my brain was completely overstimulated by everything that I have planned and that I'm trying to do. So um, given that we are probably going to be home for months and months, I think I need to um, slow the to-do list down a little bit um, and just work my way slowly through it. There's plenty of time um, and none of it is all that essential really. So anyway, <laughs> having said that, um, I did want to talk about uh, a couple of the challenges that I am really excited about um, and that I am hoping to um, complete projects for, well, I'll complete projects for um, them anyway, but hopefully in the deadline, within the deadline. So the first of those is the Socialist's newest mini challenge, which is So Your Birth Year. So I've mentioned it before, but I am a uh, current temporary editor for The Socialist, um, which means that I uh, write posts for The Socialist blog um, and I take a turn every so often to manage the Instagram account. Um, and there's lots of chat in between that. They have a Slack channel. It's, they're a really great bunch. Um, it's a really good community to put a part of the um, their Slack channel. So, uh, yep, so that's what being a temporary editor means and you do it for six months. Um, and um, one of the things I've been doing, I've been um, writing a number of the posts for the current mini challenge, the So Your Birth Year challenge, so because of that I'm more excited about it than ever. Um, so I have seen this one coming, so it's only they, um, with the mini challenges they just run for a week and they announce them on the first day and then obviously you've got a week. Um, but because I was involved in writing posts etc, um, obviously I knew this was coming so I did have a bit more time to prepare. Um, and I was going to just talk you through my thought process on this. So I, I have written a um, blog post for The Socialist about uh, my thought process, um, but I thought it would be fun to talk about here on here as well. So my birth year is 1983. Obviously, you don't have to interpret the theme that strictly. So you know, if you want to sew something that's vaguely 80s or 90s or 70s or 60s, etc., obviously you can, but I went fairly strictly 1983 um, and I sewed my own birth year project for myself but obviously you don't have to you might sew a project for a child or a relative or a friend um, based on their birth year so working with 1983 and fairly strictly um, so I started thinking I started with movies that was my first thought so what movies were popular um, and there is one movie in particular from 1983 which is quite obvious inspiration clothing wise um, which is Flashdance um, and that uh, loose um, open neck sweater so I did think about that um, otherwise the movies that year meh, from a clothing perspective not that exciting um, there was Return of the Jedi but Leia mainly wears this green camo poncho which is alright but um, and obviously she wears the bikini, but there was no way I was going to make that. Um, I did think about Educate Rita, um, just because when I was looking at good films from that year, that was one of the films that was notable, and um, Julie Walters' wardrobe in that is quite good fun. There's kind of lots of blouses and pencil skirts. Um, so yeah, they were the main things. 
wasn't that inspiring costume wise I didn't think so then I started looking at music from that year and obviously there's loads of choice um looking at music so I ended up spending most of a day listening to um, songs from 1983 as a result um partly as research and partly just because it was good fun um and once I got started I was uh, I was hooked so um there were various things that were really obvious so there was loads of denim um there was quite a lot of leather there were a number of bands that uh very much dressed in two-piece suits so like spandu ballet um there was the new romantics um and that look and um karma chameleon by culture club was one of the uk uh, number ones that year so obviously boy george got a very distinctive look or the pom-poms and the bows etc um, in terms of female singers, so Madonna released her first album that year. It had quite a grungy look in 83. Um, yeah, there was loads of choice. Um, oh, Bonnie Tyler and Total Eclipse of the Heart in this kind of white ethereal dress. Um, so yeah, so I thought about music. Um, and then I did also, um, obviously there's an option that you could use a certain pattern from 1983. I mean, I never actually checked through my own stash, actually, if there was something in there. Um, I had a quick Google, but I kind of felt that that was going to be such a rabbit hole to try and pick a pattern. Either, um, I mean, I was thinking either a Birdo magazine from that year um, or a actual paper pattern from that year. Um, but yeah, I think you could just spend, I just felt I could have spent hours just looking at old issues of Birdo. Um, and old patterns and finding one that I wanted to make and then I got to track it down so I decided maybe not um, and then the other thing that I did think about was um, I, uh, editorial fashion from 1983 um, so I had a look at some issues of uh, Vogue from the year for example I did just a bit of googling as well um, and one thing I spotted is that the Vogue archive so they actually um, the archive and they have it for a number of countries so there's like the US Vogue archive Italian Vogue archive etc um, a number of years ago, they um, archived all their past issues, basically. So every issue of Vogue is in these archives. Um, the full membership to the archive, if you actually subscribe via Vogue, is really expensive. You can get access if you um, if you work at a university, if you're a student, etc. Um, you may well be able to get access through your institution. But if you do, it's really tedious because they actually, rather than the magazines being a file every single page is a file so that's just unusable um the vogue archive direct um you supposedly if you sign up and register you can get three issues free i think it is but i couldn't get to work so like, i'm sure other people do a better job than me but yeah that is an option you know you could have a look i was gonna have a look at the issue from the month i was born a month and year i was born and maybe a couple of others um but yeah from the images that i did see there wasn't anything that immediately called out to me so in the end the projects that i have decided on for the so your birth year challenge um so i went ambitious and i've come up with two projects so we'll see how quickly i complete them so the first one so the when i was at the day i was born the number one um chart song in the uk was billy joel's uptown girl and in the video for Uptown Girl, Billy Joel and the band, whoever they are, um, all wear uh, they're, they're mechanics in a garage and they wear, I think they're actually shirts and trousers in a matching fabric, but they look like coveralls, basically. They've got the name over the pocket, woven name patch. Um, so I actually already had plans to make the Len coveralls by Sugardale. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity. It ties in perfectly. It was, uh, you know... The inspiration is a song on the day that was number one in the charts on the day I was born um, and it fits in with uh, an existing plan I already had to make this project. The pattern was already in my stash, the fabric was already in my stash, um, so I've ordered the woven name patch um, and yeah, I'm working through those. I made a start on them, so hoping to finish those soon. Um, and then the other project um, was also inspired by music um, and that is um, that my favourite band um are the smiths and the smiths were formed in 1983 um and they uh, that year they went on tour and there was a t-shirt for that first tour um which is pretty cool actually so it's got the name of the band and then it has a picture of some daffodils um obviously those original t-shirts are really rare now um because it was before they had even released an album 
Um, so I decided to uh, recreate that original tour t-shirt from 83. Um, so I ordered some white t-shirt fabric um, from Save Me Sunshine um, and I've made some screen printing stencils. Um, and the way I do it, I tend to, so I um, blew up a picture, printed out a picture of the relevant, the logo on the original t-shirt to the size I wanted. And then I, um, the way I normally do it is that I use, so I use a stencil with the screen printing uh, screen, but I tend to cut them out of acetate. So I put my print out against a piece of acetate and then I cut out the area that I want to print in the acetate sheet. And it, it just holds up better than if you did it in paper, for example. So I've got the stencils um, ready to go. Um, and Phil also fancies one of these t-shirts. So I'm going to print us both at one. We're going to get matching t-shirts. Um, so yeah, so that's my other project. And while I was at it, I then got carried away and I'm, I'm going to make some screen print some other um, band tees as well for some gigs that we, well, we were going to soon. Obviously we won't be, but you know we will be going to when they're rescheduled. So I hope um, other people are planning to participate with the So Your Birth Year Challenge. It should be really good fun to see what everyone makes. Um, and it'll be really good fun if people from um, born in different decades are all taking part and seeing a real mixture, not just 80s. So that's one of the projects um, on my to-do list or two of the projects on my to-do list at the moment. Um, and then another challenge that I um, am hoping to participate in during March is uh, that So Over 50 um, are running, for the second year running I think now, um, their So 50 Visible Challenge. Um, and the idea of this challenge is to celebrate those um, pattern companies that use models who are aged over 50 in their actual product photography by um, choosing one of those patterns and sewing up a version of the pattern and sharing it. So celebrate those companies um, and recognise that they are making an effort to be more representative in their models. So I did take part last year. They, they do accept you don't necessarily have to make a new project. You can just take a new photo of, a, of something you've already sewn. Um, if you prefer. So last year I participated with um, a Makers Atelier um, asymmetrical gather dress. I think that's right. Um, which I think I'd already made, so I shared some photos of it. This year I am um, aiming to make a new project. Um, it's Paper Theory's uh, Ol Olya or Olga shirt. Um, and um, yeah, so I so I bought the pattern. I already had some suitable fabric, um, and this again, this was a pattern that I already wanted to make. I um, hadn't got around to buying it yet, but I was planning to. So it tied in perfectly. Um, that was, that I hopefully can participate in the challenge, or I will, regardless of deadline anyway. Um, and it also allowed me to sew some, some use some stash fabric, buy a pattern that I wanted to try anyway. So perfect. So I was just going to mention a few other things um, before I finish up. So first of those was a workshop I attended at the beginning of the month um, before the restrictions came into force here in the UK. Um, and that was a soft, a soft basketry workshop um, at the Birmingham Guild of Weavers, Spinners and Dyers, where I'm a member. So the tutor um, was Avril Otiv. Um, and so she has a book on the subject um, and she came and did us a workshop in soft basketry. Um, and I've got a few clips, so I'll... Um, couple of those in but we were using pine needles um to make a small basket um, and it's actually a really um easy to pick up technique actually i'll definitely want to try again so we we used a um a wax linen thread um to do the sewing to sew the pine needles in this case together um and um it's just really a matter of getting a clump of pine needles in the right diameter to work with and trying to keep that consistent. So we used a small piece of um, paper straw as a guide to that. Keep the pine needles inside it and just keep moving it along. And then it's just obviously, you're just trying to coil the pine needles into a basket shape and sew them together with this wax linen thread. Um, the only thing with using the pine needles, so the smaller material you use, um, the, you basically have to constantly replace the materials. So as the pine needles, obviously as you get into the end of the pine needles, you just constantly, every with every stitch, you basically put in some, another one or two in so that um, your material doesn't run out. 
which is quite time consuming. So the baskets we made were really very small. Um, and mine's teeny tiny. Um, but you can use the same technique, obviously, with some cord, etc. Um, and then it'll be much quicker because then you it is just the sewing. It's not stopping between every stitch to bring in more materials. So, um, yeah, it was really good fun, actually. It was and, and quite satisfying um, and easy to pick up. So I'm definitely thinking of getting some wax linen thread and then trying it with some different materials. Um, so we'll see if I get to it. I bought the book, which I always do at these workshops, so I've got no excuse um, not to. Um, so then the next thing that I was going to mention is the Sobron meetup. So it might sound a bit ridiculous at the moment to be talking about um, in-person meetups, um, but I was in touch with Lauren from Guthrie Garney and um, we've put a date in the diary um, and the date of the meetup is Saturday the 24th of October. So it's far enough in the future that hopefully we'll all be out and about again and able to meet up. Um, and if you don't know about the Sobron meetup, so this is our seventh year. It's a meetup here in the UK in Birmingham city centre. Um, we meet in the morning, we get tea and cake. We have a shop in Birmingham, which has a couple of uh, good fabric shops in the centre and uh, a market as well. And then we get the bus to Moseley, which is a village nearby. Um, and we go and have a shop at Guthrie Garney and we have a big charity raffle. So yeah, so I'm um, looking forward to that in October, especially if we haven't had many opportunities to meet up in the interim. Um, oh, and then the only other thing I think I was going to mention today um, is a uh, quilt project, actually, that I thought might be of interest. So this is um, by Victoria of Little Black Duck. Um, and I'm not uh, a quilter. I did try um, a little bit of quilting recently and it was the right mess. I used fabric that was too loosely woven, so it stretched and yeah, it was not nearly precise enough. Um, but uh, Victoria has got a really cool um, pattern. It's from mini quilt, so it's quite um, manageable as well. Um, and it's called, I think it's called the Spool of Thread uh, mini quilt but it um, features a number of spools of thread. So I thought it was very suitable for um, all sewers if you want to have a go at quilting. Um, and Victoria's been doing a um, sew along, so there's got, you've got loads of support materials and information for the pattern as well. I might give it a try, um, maybe not right away, given that I already have a long to-do list as mentioned, but maybe you can go on the bottom if things, if we're still at home in a couple of months and, um, I need some more projects. So that's all from me today. I hope you're all keeping well um, and I'll speak to you soon.